Hi, it's Saturday the 9th of October and I've just arrived at East Kirtley. There's not many people about this morning. For those watching for the first time, this was a former RAF East Kirtley, a bomber command station in World War II, home to 57 and 630 squadrons, both squadrons flying Avro Lancasters. Now home to Lancaster NX611, just Jane, which is being restored to airworthy condition. This is why I'm here this morning. They are 3D scanning nine formers in the rear fuselage of the Lancaster. The reason for the scan, KB976 rear fuselage requires eight or nine new formers. You can see in this video the damage formers and places where the formers should be. The Avro drawings the centre have in places they are illegible. So a scan of Just Jane and a new drawing from the scan should solve this problem. This will enable them to produce new formers to complete the restoration. The formers on this section are all different sizes, so all nine have to be scanned. KB976, you remember, is the Lancaster damaged by a hangar roof cave-in at Woodford in Manchester. Angela puts down the white targets. So they just have to sort of be, not uniform, they have to sort of be random. Yes. Um, and it just helps the scanner to sort of pick up the data. We're just putting markers down now so it helps the scanner track its positioning. Oh, I see. Um, so it knows where it is. And you put these onto a CAD drawing, do you? Yeah, these are going to be turned into 2D drawings. Yeah. I think they're going to be used to create more formers, aren't they? Yeah. Is it scanning now? Or are yeah, you? it's yeah. scanning now, yeah. On distance, how accurate is it? You don't mind me talking to you while you're working? No, do you? it's fine, no. Yeah. This is accurate, down to about 0.1 of a mil. And it looks on that picture, it's only detected the actual former and not the skin. Is that right? No, it's got the skin on there. I just can't rotate it at the moment. It's got the internal skin, you know, the inside of the skin. Yeah. So how long does it take you to scan a former then, once you've got set up? Uh, well, I suppose with the markers and stuff like that, probably about an hour. So this is just the initial stage. Yeah. And do you make up the CAD drawings then for yeah, it? Yeah, we do all of that, yeah. Yeah. Do you do um, 3D printing as yeah, well with it? Yeah. That. yeah. So, just this, is, this projects light onto the surface with a pattern, which then picks up the the details or reflects back into the cameras, if you like. It's not just a, a beam. A laser, no. Like no, that's a laser scanner. Yeah. Something like that. No. So, there's two cameras in there. Projector. Two and what's the top one? This is called a structured light scanner. Yeah. Lovely, okay, thank you. The scanner Daniel is using is handheld. It has three scanners. The top scanner, the bottom right is a scanner, and the third scanner, the third scanner on the left is colour. The centre bottom is the white light pattern projector. The white light pattern is projected onto the formers. The scanner picks up the target strikers as well. When the scanner picks up the distorted pattern, it means there is an alteration in their shape. The computer program produces a 3D image which can be produced into a 2D drawing.
Doesn't it matter at what distance you are away with the scanner? It does matter, yeah. Yeah, there's a set distance you have to be. Does it matter what sort of ambient light you have with That's your machine? Scanning, yeah. yeah, it can't be too bright. Yeah. What is your general work then? Is it on aircraft or? Uh, all sorts. All sorts, yeah. Sculptures, vehicles, vehicles yes. uh, museums. Thank you to Angela and Daniel from Surface Scan for allowing me to video them while they were working on Just Jane. In the next part, Keith starts removing the Lancaster plug rivets. The plug rivets, I believe, were unique to the Avro Lancaster, but could have been used on other Avro aircraft. They were used along the boom of the two wing spars. I will let Keith take up the story. This video was taken on the 29th of September 2021. I will then jump the video to October the 18th, 21, when he started removing the rivets. Which are the um, plug rivets? Are there plug rivets on this side or the other side? Oh. Are they made from the same material as the other rivets? Yeah, they're, they're, what they are is... Um, what it does is... You drill a measured hole and then it's tapped. Yeah. And then what you do is you get an, a rivet and it's cut to a specific length. Yeah. But it's over length for the hole. If you were to slide it into the hole, it'd be sticking out proud. Mm -hmm. And what you do is to cook the rivets and make them really soft. Mm -hmm. And you push it into the hole and bang it in with a flat rivet gun. Yeah. And what it does, it hits the bottom of the hole, and as it hits the bottom of the hole, it spreads, and it spreads into the thread. Mm. So the idea is afterwards, you, it actually says in the book, if you drill a hole, and then knock the tang of a file mm. into it, you can turn them out, screw them out. Mm. But we but, haven't tried it yet. No. <laughs> So these are the Avro plug rivets. Have you got any? Can I have a look at please? There's not much sign of thread on them. When you actually look in the hole, there's not much of a thread in the hole. They're not very deep either, are they? No, you see a little bit of a thread in that one. The trouble is a lot of them are just shearing off now. Like. I suppose on Throwing these they could make them a little uh, go up a couple of thou on the... We can go up a side. Yeah. Have you been able to drill one yet and put a tang of a file in and turn it out? You, you can't use a file. But they say use a file, but that was before they had easy outs yeah. in the 40s. So yeah. I started using easy outs but and they started coming out all right. but. Yeah, that's the, the left-handed thread thing, is it? The easy out? Yeah. 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 We just put into a, a screw and... Yeah. It tightens on and pulls it out, yeah. Yeah. Used all my easy out, so... Oh. Not my right hand, though. Yeah. The trouble is, it's the rivets in some places are corroded and they're just shearing off. Yeah. 
See that, that one there comes straight out. Yeah. Well, it's going to be a very time consuming job when you think. Oh yeah, top and bottom spokes. Top and bottom. So what we've got there, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30, 30, 60. About 80 rivets. Yeah. And uh, just, we've got one, two, three, four, five, about 10 panels. Uh, so we've got about 800. And then the rear spark. Both sides of this bar as well. Oh yeah, and then the bottom spot, uh, bottom yeah. side of it. So that's 800, 4 to the 32, 3,200. So you've got about 4,000 plug rivets. 4,000 plug rivets. In one, room, in one wing. Some of them come straight out, but the corroded ones just yeah. there's a bit of corrosion under the head, it just shears off. Did they come out? Oh, yeah. And what did you use there to get it out? Talks, but just with the splines on it. Yeah, I'm not right here. Keith was using a torque bit to remove the blind rivets, it has six splines on it. Yeah. That's the way it goes, I'm afraid. So how will you get that remaining parts out of there? Just... Have to drill it and re-tap it. Sometimes they come out, sometimes they don't. Yeah, I've seen that one. It's come out. Yeah. 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 Probably as if they're slightly yeah. corroded. Yeah. You Just wouldn't do any good soaking in a penetrating oil. You won't get nothing down there, they've been in there 70 years. Yeah, that's true. Probably as if, if they've corroded slightly, they're just shearing off. Hopefully, they will not have to remove all the plug rivets in the French wing, but only where the panels are damaged and need replacing. But when it comes to the restoration of just Jane, NX611's wings, all the rivets will have to be replaced to make her airworthy. 60 rivets. 